Well, welcome back to the channel. I am once again sitting at my uh, dining room table because my uh, studio back here is still sort of being refurbished and trying to get into uh, version three. And hopefully within another week or two, we'll be there. Today, I wanted to talk to you about a trip I just made to Assisi, Italy, and the fact that I was literally forced to use my iPhone for about 95% of my photos. So let's get started. Okay, so I didn't plan to use my iPhone quite so much when I went. I took my uh, Canon R6 Mark II and I took the 16 millimeter wide angle, ultra wide angle, that I had hoped to put on my platypod so that I could set it down on the floor of uh, Basilica or Cathedral that I was in, point it up, get those really nice um, lines, dramatic lines from the floor to the ceiling. Um, I took the 24 to 240, uh, which is the lens that Scott Kelby recommends to take on um, on uh, travel videos or travel uh, photography because it is so versatile, even though it only goes down to like an F4, F4 to F5.6, I think. Um, the little bit of noise you get or the high SO that you have to shoot at in some situations is not that bad. So I took this and then just for fun, I took the Nifty 50 RF50 uh, to use as sort of a walk around lens from time to time. And I had the uh, Peak Design tripod that I took with me that I did actually use on one occasion. Um, and I had taken um, this little nifty thing here to um, set up and do video with my iPhone because I had really intended to do some video work while I was in Assisi. Now, I did all of that based on the fact that uh, when I went to Rome last year, you could go into just about any church in Rome, and photography is not prohibited. You can set your, set your platypod. Now, tripods are prohibited. You can set your, tri your platypod down on the ground. You can take your time. You can get the shot you want. You can... You can do whatever you need to do. There are a couple of exceptions there that I did find. But in Assisi, I wanted to go to the Basilica of St. Francis. Photography is not allowed. I wanted to go to the Basilica of St. Clair. Photography is not allowed. I wanted to go to the uh, Basilica of St. Mary among the angels. Photography is not allowed. And I wanted to go to the Church of San Damiano. Photography is allowed. So out of the four churches that I wanted to visit, because I'm working on a, on a book at the moment, a non-photography book that uh, utilizes these four locations, I thought that I could take everything that I took with me and take the pictures that I wanted, uh, and it turns out that I could not. Now, even in the Basilica of St. Francis, when I pulled my phone out to take a couple of pictures when I was there by myself, I got stopped once by uh, somebody who every day they sort of set the place up at the beginning of the day and she told me that photography was not allowed. I put my phone away. But then when I went back and there were like tour groups there, they all had their phones out. They were all taking pictures. Nobody stopped them. I did uh, email <clears throat> um, both the Basilica of St. Francis and the Basilica of St. Clair to ask them if I could get a permit to do some photography in the church. Uh, St. Francis, Basilica of St. Francis said, definitely no, photography is not allowed. It's a place of worship. Uh, we discourage that. The Basilica of St. Francis said, if I wanted to use my phone to take pictures and I was away from other people so that I was not disturbing them in prayer or contemplation, then taking some pictures for my vacation was allowed. Um, so I did take some pictures, and I wound up with everywhere that I went, basically, I took pictures with uh, my iPhone. The Basilica of um, San Rufino, Rufino, I'm sorry, 
Um, no photography allowed, but iPhones are okay. Um, so as a result, I just stopped carrying my camera and I took my iPhone pretty much everywhere I went. I did take a few street photos uh, one day. We'll look at a couple of those. And I did attempt to take, and at the time of this video, I've not actually edited it yet. So we'll see if we can edit it before I get the video done. I did take some sunset photos of the Basilica of St. Francis, which is where I had my tripod set up and I was using my, uh, <clears throat> my 24 to 240. And I had my case filters on there. So I was taking about a two minute exposure, um, trying to get at least some salvageable things out of my camera while I was there. So <clears throat> one of the things that I learned is I need to be prepared to use my phone more than I anticipated. And to do that, there are some things we need to do to set it up. So let's look at those right now. And then we'll take a look at some pictures. We'll compare some pictures from my uh, R6 Mark II and pictures I took with my iPhone using the settings I'm going to show you. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of see how this performed for me while I was out and about in Assisi, Italy. iPhone for travel photography, one of the first things you need to do is look at the settings of your camera. Now, there are a lot of apps you can use to take pictures, and I chose just to use the camera app in the iPhone. And so I have it pulled up here on my screen, and I'm just going to go into settings. I'm going to click on camera, and a few things that I'm going to do here, one of the things that I do is I make sure that I am on high efficiency, which is the smallest file size it can save to, or the, I, I should say it's the most efficient file size it can save to. <clears throat> um, and the camera is going to take the image in RAW, which is a DNG file when you pull it into Lightroom. But if you share it with someone, even without editing it, the phone is going to share it as an HEIC file, uh, which has become pretty commonplace. I'm not going to worry about video recording right now, but I am going to go into preserve settings and you'll see that I have several things here turned on. Um, macro, I don't, but I, I could. Exposure adjustment, night mode, uh, Apple Pro Raw, all of those things um, I've got set so that uh, if I take a picture, and I've set the app up, I take a picture, I've got it set on a raw file, I've got the, the exposure compensation turned down 0.3, you know, I'm just making stuff up here, but um, when I close the app out and then I open the camera back up again, whatever I used last time is going to be the one that sets up this time. And so as a result, I don't have to go back in and tweak all those settings again, I can just pull it out and start taking pictures because I have the preserved settings set on. Um, I also have the grid turned on, and this is mainly to help me with composition, but also if you're taking a picture, if you're doing travel photography and you're somewhere where you're taking a picture straight up at a ceiling, the, um, the grid will automatically put two crosshairs there. And as you move your camera to get those crosshairs exactly right, you will be level against the ceiling. Same thing if you're shooting down at the ground, or if you're taking a top-down picture of food on your table, if you hold it straight, suddenly two crosshairs will appear. You can move that around so that you're perfectly flat against the surface. Um, now, in photographic styles, this is, this is what's gonna happen if you just automatically send a picture without editing it. I had it turned on high contrast for my travel photography, but ordinarily, I usually use the cool style. I just kind of like that look better for my images, so I'm gonna set that there. Um, 
lens correction macro is turned on um, so that if you get close enough to something, macro automatically turns on. Those are just some of the basic settings. Let me see if I've missed anything here. Preserve settings, composition, grid. I think that's it. Um, and so once you've got that set up, then when you go into the camera, well, let me just turn the camera on here. So I'm, I'm just going to uh, point it here at the, at, the, uh, at the tripod. So once you've got the camera set up, you will see at the bottom, I've got on the Pro Max, I have four um, cameras. So the 0.5 camera is really about a um, 13 millimeter. The 1X is a 24 millimeter, which is great for moving around town, street photography. The uh, 2X is basically a digital zoom of the 1X, so it goes to 4, 48, almost a 50 millimeter, which is a good lens as well. And then the 3X is a 77 millimeter. So you can see the difference between the reach of these lenses going through them. Now, I recommend that you only use these buttons. Do not manually zoom in. You see where now I'm almost at... I'm, I'm at like 10x here. You're going to create a whole lot of noise. It's going to be really soft. Don't do that. The other thing you'll see if, if I swipe up on the screen, I have several options down here. Um, and so one of the things I have is the exposure compensation. Now, when I'm shooting in RAW, I don't need to use the exposure compensation. I leave it at zero. But if I'm shooting not raw, if I'm shooting in HEIC or JPEG format, I will turn this down 0.7 of a stop because the iPhone tends to overexpose. Um, and so all you have to do is just slide it where you want it. And then again, your camera will save that the next time that you uh, use your camera. So I'm gonna put it back to zero for me at the moment. Um, and then you'll see at the top, I have RAW turned off, but if I tap it, RAW will turn on, so now I'm shooting in RAW. The little uh, target area next to it is live mode, and I don't use that very often, but if I do, you'll notice if I turn it on, RAW gets turned off immediately because it's not gonna shoot live mode in RAW. So I usually leave that. And then over here, dark or night mode, is turned off and uh, once the sun starts going down I turn that on because the camera will automatically start adjusting itself to let in more light. You'll also get um, a, a yellow notice at the top of the screen to tell you that hold your camera still until that yellow button is gone because it, it may take a, you know, a little bit longer to get that picture. Um, and those are, the, those are the basic things that I do to take photography. Now, the last thing that I always forget, but I have to keep reminding myself is that I need to tap on whatever it is that I want to focus on. And if I hold that, you'll see that it will lock. See that up at the top, AEAF lock. So that's locked my exposure compensation and my focus. Now, it's not locked it on that subject, it's locked it on that, dis on that distance. So I can go ahead and you know, maneuver however I want to to get whatever uh, composition I want, but that distance between me and the camera is locked. So those are the basic things for taking pictures with your iPhone, and now let's look at a few. I think you'll agree that these pictures actually turned out quite well. Keep in mind that the iPhone is shooting everything at about an f2 or an f2.2. If you want to get an f8 or an f11, then you need to use some kind of app outside of the camera app 
uh, which again, I just didn't do. Um, but let's compare. So I did happen to take, as I was looking back through my images, I did happen to take one scene with my iPhone one day, and I took, a, I took that same scene again on another day with my Canon R6. So let's start with the Canon R6. I'm going to put this picture up on the screen. This is the straight out of camera shot. And I'm, I'm standing uh, on a, on a, by a wall looking out over the valley of Assisi. And you can see that that dome on the, off to the right, that is the Basilica of St. Mary among the angels where the Porzioncola Chapel is housed. And so that's about a 40 minute walk. Um, and so I, I took this shot out over the valley uh, I was very happy with that. And then when that, when I did the edit, this is what the edit looked like. Uh, and I kept the same crop, which is a two by three crop inside the camera. I didn't do anything else with the crop at this point. So, uh, that's, that's the picture from the Canon R6 Mark II with the 24 to 150 or 24 to 240 millimeter. It was shot at about 150 millimeter. Okay. Now. Here is the, the shot I took with the iPhone straight out of the phone. And what I was trying to do here, what I was hoping to do was sort of be able to get all of this, all of these buildings here at the lower part of the, of the image. I was going to hopefully get those edited to a point where they kind of added to the picture. They didn't. So I cropped all of those out. And originally I did a uh, 16 by nine crop and I'll show you this picture right here. This is the 16 by nine crop finished. Well, that really didn't tell me much about comparing the two pictures. So I re-edited it and I did it as a two by three crop, sort of along the same size of image as my Canon R6. And this is what I got. Now, I think you would be hard-pressed to tell me that this was an iPhone picture and not a Canon picture on the screen. Now, obviously, I've cropped it in a lot. And so when I go to print it, I don't think it's going to print well. But on the screen, it looks just fine. So I'm going to put these two pictures up side by side so that you can see. I did basically the same edits um, you know, it might be a little bit different here and there, but basically the same edits, and this is what I got. So I think you will agree it is entirely possible to do the, the vast majority, the heavy lifting of your travel photography with your phone and just not worry about all that other stuff. Now, unless, you know, if you're going to take professional kind of pictures and you want to print them in a book and you want to do whatever, and obviously you're going to need something different. But if, but if what you're trying to do is capture the memories of your trip and you just plan on sharing them online, your iPhone, I think, is going to do a tremendous job. Tell me what you think in the comments. Do you use your phone like this? Have you taken it out on travel photography? What kind of results have you got? Uh, leave me some comments and we will see you again next time.